Hi, I'm Lisa Dalton. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm very excited to be sharing with you information that is a deep passion for me. I'm an actress. I'm also an acting teacher. I've had the opportunity of sharing some of this information all across the world, in Moscow, in London, Berlin, Brussels, Paris, all over the United States. What we have to share with you today I think can be valuable for anyone, regardless of whether or not they're actually an actor or a performer. Our topic today has to do with Michael Chekhov. Michael Chekhov was the nephew of the Russian playwright Anton. And Michael lived from 1891 to 1955. In Russia, he grew to be considered the greatest actor that ever lived. However, during the height of his fame, we also had the Soviet government in power. Michael's effect on audiences was so awesomely uplifting and inspiring that they experienced his performances as spiritual events that altered their lives very deeply. And under the Soviet regime, this kind of impact on the audiences was forbidden. So by 1928, he had to escape in order to save his life. Fortunately for us, he wound up in Hollywood. We're really glad that he did, because here in Hollywood, from 1942 to 1955, he coached some of our greatest actors of that period, including Marilyn Monroe, Gary Cooper, Anthony Quinn, Beatrice Strait, and many, many other people. Folks like Jack Palance, Mala Powers, Jack Colvin, and lots of lesser known actors. And today, he still influences some of our greatest actors like Anthony Quinn and Johnny Depp and Clint Eastwood. So what is it that he did? And why is it that we don't know a lot more about the Michael Chekhov system? Well, guess what? In the world today, there is a burgeoning interest all over, there are Chekhov studios that are developing all around the world in many, many different countries. And why now? I think one could say Mr. Chekhov was dealing with the realm of energy, the information we have about quantum physics and metaphysics, the concept of the butterfly effect, right? Do you know what that is? The butterfly effect, the idea that if a butterfly flaps its wings in England, it creates a wave that can actually be felt in New Zealand. And your thoughts and your feelings and your desires are like those butterfly wings. You as a human being alter the construct of creation with every thought, feeling, and desire you have. So in Michael Chekhov's acting system, we are looking at training the physical body to become a master of communicating certain thoughts, feelings, and desires. We do that by focusing on training the body to hold things, for example, like objectives. We train the body to be able to move like earth, water, air, or light, called molding, flowing, flying, radiating. We're going to step into our Lisa Dalton's acting workshop, where we're playing around with the ideas. The actors decide which of Chekhov's ideas they want to use, and then we make up exercises. We're going to step into this little event here, where they're working with objective and style and several other things. Join us now at the Barn Studio. Okay, eggs, you are not allowed to get any closer than you are. 
right, to move left, to move one step forward or one step back. All right? Without speaking to them and without them having their eyes open. So you're going to try to use gestures to move them back or get them to go up on their toes or come down or to move right or left back. Okay, so B's, go ahead and close your eyes. Okay, and A's, go ahead and begin. Your objective is to move your partner through gesture. started to change what they were doing because pretended what the person did was sort of like what you meant. Like you were really tempted to say, oh, the person's going this way. Okay, so I'll move them this way. Okay. <laughs> because that's the way they were going. I cheated once or twice. And at least I'll feel more <laughs> successful. I'll feel like I meant that. That's what I meant. Yeah. Good. Open your eyes. Go to the end of the line next. Your objective. We're trying to get your objective. I'm like, oh. But I, 
had like when when she got on the rug, I'm like she got the same idea. That's the same idea I had. Yeah. Get on the rug, and then when you get to the point, it's about two, three, <laughs> four, three, five, and that's it. And booyah! <laughs> So we were working with the ball toss and we, we were working with a feeling of ease and then we moved into objective and and now we're combining objective and style. Now maybe you want to try one? Uh, yeah. Uh, let's do, okay, perfect for you, Manami. Let's have you do uh, a uh, martial art <coughs> Martial art film style. Martial art style? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The actors will tell us what tools they would like to work with. And without any given circumstances, situations, or anything like that, they will just start trying to apply the tool and try to allow the tool to guide the improv. The fundamental guideline is that they are to accept whatever their partner states. How as, about they have you guys in, in two different ones? You're in different. The same, but same oh, okay. So we're different. So like you might be molding okay. and you're flying. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I'll give you your start. So you're gonna start in flying, and you'll start in molding. Here we have this lovely product. Well. Oh my god! It's, if you get it now, you know you get this extra prize with it, and only a few left. We have five more minutes. If you call now, now to call now. You yes, call now. now. We are going to have this beautiful, beautiful product for you, waiting for you. Call to get this product. One eight hundred nine six six four four four. Four four four. Yeah, we will give them fifty percent of their money back. No, fifty. Sixty percent of your money back. Sixty percent. Sixty percent, right? Fantastic. 60%. Right. That's great. Exactly. That was the self-evaluation process, yeah. uh, based, the evaluation based on what our goal was. Our goal was to be able to stay in the scene with the changing qualities of movement, the earth, water, air, light, the molding, flowing, flying, radiating. All right, so how did we feel? How did you feel? It wasn't full body, I was more upper body. Okay, And good. I wasn't using my space. Okay, um, good. Uh, but I'm supposed to be focusing on listening to Josh. Yeah. So focus on, on on the product more. And then towards the end, you were finally really hooking into each other, really listening to each other, and responding and setting each other up and that, that give, give and take process. You know, the funny thing is, it's about something they don't, neither of them know nothing about. I stay out because I don't know nothing about it either. How was it for me? It was better. There were still a couple times when it started to I realized I could feel it more the more it stood up right. Well, I know it was kind of um, kind of a paradox. So I thought leaning over would make me more at ease. How about your legs? Yeah. Um, and sometimes I thought they were very, very well grounded in. It was very smooth, and other times, you know, get a little off balance. But the weird part is the legs. No, that's definitely body. Okay, good. So when you're unsure, mentally unsure, the feeling of ease starts to waver. And mm -hmm. then the physical body starts to reflect that wavering, primarily in the, in the legs. In the legs. Yeah, it will progress. Yeah, and it progresses. Good. Counterproductive towards your feeling of ease. And that stillness is safe. Yeah, somehow. Trying to figure out a way to convince somebody. Yeah, everybody can do this if you want. And I accept and love myself fully and completely. I accept and love myself fully and completely. When I'm still. When I am still. Even though I move on.
so fully than I am still. I am willing to accept myself fully when I am still. I am willing to accept myself fully when I am still. I am willing to accept myself fully when I am still. Love. Cartoon. Hey, be tasty. In our darkest moments, we may envy mortality, but we should never so. aspire to it. Guilt is a poison, and staying past our time is death. Romantic comedy. But it need not be. If, if, memory asks us to recall something from the past and if I were to ask you and you, you can all try this right now what did you wear four days ago yeah so where's your energy the moment I ask you to recall Plus. Yes, yes, and you can see by your gestures, it's the the energy it's just. just the that's right, and the and and you can see where you gestured. It was all back away, away. Thinking. Yes, coming. So that keeps you then from not staying in the moment. That's my Meisner. Yes. So yes. So Meisner wanted. Different. Okay, great, great. So so we understand if you go to memory recall, right. the moment you go into recall, you disassociate from the present. Mm -hmm. There. So you, so we understand that's a, a choice that isn't going to bring you into the moment. Mm -hmm. Being in the moment, in the Meisner process, Meisner, oh, we could say that each human being has an outer self that they reveal to the world. And they have an inner life that they reveal to the world only through specific means of their outer form. They choose when they're going to reveal what from their inner life through this mask, this outer mask. In the Meisner technique, we're looking to remove the mask and reveal what is coming from our inner world without any masking. In the Chekhov work, we take into consideration that the conscious self is only one small part of the whole self. So what we're interested in then is how we can reveal not just the smaller part of ourself, the everyday self, the 5 to 10 percent of our human potential that we utilize on a daily basis. From, so one could say on some level, 
in the Meisner work, we are looking to stay with who we are based on our environmental influences, minus the filters that we usually put up in order to survive in the world. Michael Chekhov wants us to operate from who we are as a higher self, as a, as a powerful creative resource. Our, our whole self is a powerful creative resource, limited only by the limits of the individual imagination and beliefs. So I believe that I can tap into all the images that ever existed and I can bring those images into me and allow them to come through me and those images are going to be able to have an inner life and an outer life that express themselves in a completely unique way from myself. If I, as an actor, tear off my own personal mask and always reveal what's coming from, let's say, Lisa, the everyday Lisa, after my second character is performed, I'm going to be having the same responses. All my characters will respond because Lisa always gets mad at this and never gets mad at that and is always made happy by that and is always made unhappy. They will have the same vocal pattern, same intonation, same expression of joy, same expression of sorrow, same expression of the fundamental emotional you know, the schemata of emotions, the archetypal emotions, will all be expressed in the same patterns. And the idea, the fundamental idea, the repetition and stuff like that, based on, I have to have eye contact with you. Problematic, because what if I'm shooting a film and I can't look at you because you're in makeup and I have to act off an X? Or what if I'm auditioning and the casting director doesn't act what I want them to act back with me? Then I'm stuck. So I blame my limitations of performance on my partners. And in, in Michael Chekhov's work, I develop this moment-to-moment -moment contact that is absolutely in the present with my partner, but I'm operating and responding through my character and not through my everyday self. So what makes Lisa happy may not make my character happy. And if all of us had a dying child here at our feet and we were surrounding it, how would we feel? We, we would all feel horrible, horrible right? And yet we would have 12 different physical responses. What, how much of the horror you reveal, you reveal, you reveal, how each person reveals and copes with the horror that they're experience, it's experiencing would be unique. Each person would have their own mask, way of masking that horror. Some people would go into a tremendous degree of efficiency some people would go into helplessness. Somebody else would go into prayer. Somebody else would go into rage. The concept of being in the moment is highly regarded by Michael Chekhov, the, the idea of being really improvisational. And even Meisner, in, the, in his book, when asked how, what were his influences, says Michael Chekhov. In him, he witnessed, and I'm paraphrasing here, he witnessed a kind of truth beyond naturalism. Thank you for watching elements of our workout. We're really excited that you were here with us today, and I really appreciate the actors who were willing to share their work with you. In our work, you may have noticed that there was a moment where I did a little exercise with one of the actors where we were tapping. In that 
we were looking to help increase his feeling of ease through a technique that's not a checkoff technique. It's called the emotional freedom technique. And because we're addressing the whole human being in our actor training with the checkoff work, which is also why these techniques are great for any human being. The feeling of ease is something that can actually be faked. We can actually pretend that we have it. And it's something that we can use anytime we feel uneasy. We can just say, well, I'm going to pretend that I am at ease. Every human being operates more safely out of the world of pretend or the world of reality. And when you know that really, according to quantum physics, most of this is an 